What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. So most of my recent videos have been about offshore fishing. And one of the top comments I get on every video is how deep should I be fishing offshore on my lake? And this actually depends on the water clarity, the water temperature, and what time of year you're fishing offshore. And so in this video, I want to explain how you can determine how deep you need to be fishing offshore during all four seasons of the year. And hopefully you'll be able to then figure out exactly where you need to look with your electronics and on your Navionics maps to find a lot more fish this summer. So let's get into it. So first up, here are some general guidelines on how deep you should be fishing based on the water clarity of your lake. And these guidelines are based on my personal experience on the lakes that I've fished. And I've used about nine years of fishing experience to kind of develop these guidelines, but they may not be perfect, so just keep that in mind. So first up, when I'm fishing muddy water lakes, which are lakes that have zero to one foot of water visibility, I like to fish in less than eight feet of water offshore. This means that the top of any structure that I'm fishing, whether that's a hump, a point, a ledge, or whatever, is in eight feet of water or less. And on a lot of lakes around the country, eight feet of water is very shallow. But on some lakes, eight feet of water can actually be pretty deep, especially when the maximum depth of your fishery is maybe 25 to 30 feet of water. And just because I'm fishing in eight feet of water doesn't mean I'm fishing close to the bank. I could be two to 300 yards away from the bank on the main river ledge that tops out in eight feet of water. And a lot of the spots that I fish, especially on places like the Arkansas River, will top out in five feet of water like this spot here. Next up, when I'm fishing on stained water, which is water that has one to two foot of visibility, I like to fish in less than 15 feet of water. And the same thing applies, the offshore spots I'm going to be looking for need to top out in 15 feet of water or less. And then when they get to clear water, which I define as two to four feet of visibility, I'm going to be fishing in less than 25 feet of water. And then when I'm dealing with ultra clear water, which is four feet or more visibility, I want to be fishing above the thermocline. And I'm gonna explain what the thermocline is here in a second, but one thing I wanna call out is that when I'm saying that I'm fishing in less than 25 feet of water, that means that I'm looking for bass that are in less than 25 feet of water. But that doesn't mean that my boat or those fish are not sitting above, let's say 50 or 60 feet of water, suspended in 20 or 25 feet of water. And actually a lot of times I'm catching my fish suspended in the tops of trees, rock piles or brush piles that may be in 30 to 40 feet of water, but the bass are actually sitting suspended in the top of those areas in 20 to 25 feet of water. And so I wanna make sure that that's very clear because you don't just need to be looking for the bottom of the lake less than 25 feet of water. Sometimes you can look for areas that are in 50 or 60 feet of water, but where the bass can suspend higher in the water column. Now, going back to my original graphic here, one thing I want to call out is that my rule of thumb for ultra clear water, where I want to fish above the thermocline, only applies in the summertime. And I'm going to explain that right now. So first up, I'm sure a few of you guys are probably wondering, what is a thermocline and what does it have to do with how deep bass live offshore? And it's actually kind of difficult to explain what a thermocline is without going into all the science behind it. And so in this video, I'm going to give you a very brief, simple explanation that will tell you all the information you need to know to figure out how bass relate offshore. But if you want a more scientific explanation of how a thermocline works, I'll link a video down below from Hat Cam Bass, and it's the video I actually used to refresh myself on all the specifics of a thermocline before making this video. So again, check that out in the link in the description, and if you want that deeper explanation, that's where you'll find it. So here's a very simplified version of what a thermocline looks like underwater. And the easiest way I can explain it is that the thermocline is a band of water between the surface of the water and the bottom of the lake where the oxygen level in the lake changes from having lots of oxygen to having less oxygen. And basically all the water on top of the thermocline has lots of oxygen and it's gonna be warmer because it's exposed to the air and to the sun and the water below the thermocline is going to be colder and have less oxygen because it's further away from the sun and it's not close to the surface so there's no oxygen being put into the water from the air. 
And in general, bass don't like to live in water with low oxygen levels. And so that means that all of the water below the thermocline is not going to have any bass. It's going to be a dead zone. And the ideal place for bass to live is going to be just at or above the thermocline because the water is going to be a little bit cooler there, but also still have good oxygen levels. So once you know where the thermocline is on your lake, you'll know that the bass are not going to go deeper than that thermocline. And so in this example, the thermocline is 35 feet deep, so you'll know that the bass are never going to go any deeper than 35 feet of water. This means that the bass may suspend in these tall trees here in 25 to 30 feet, but they're not going to live in these shorter trees that are below the thermocline because the oxygen levels in that water are way too low. So a few questions you may be asking are one, is the thermocline always going to be at 35 feet of water? And no, that is not the case. The thermocline can be in 10 feet of water, 15 feet of water, 30 feet of water. It'll fluctuate lake to lake. And your second question is, okay, well, how do I find the thermocline? And there's actually a really easy way to do it if you have a fish finder on your boat. So here are some images from hummingbird.com of what the thermocline looks like on the hummingbird unit. And basically you'll see that there is a lot of clutter on the screen and circled is a thick band of these dots. And then the dots are thinner on the top and bottom. And this is your thermocline. And so using electronics, you can actually visibly see the thermocline and determine the top and the bottom of the thermocline. And so in this image, you know that the bass are never going to get deeper than this level. And to get this image to show up on your fish finder, you can use either the 2D sonar or your down imaging sonar. And what you want to do is go out into the deepest part of your lake. And so if that's 50 feet of water on your lake, go out to 50 feet. If it's 150 feet of water, go out to 150 feet. Then crank up the sensitivity on your graph up to two thirds or almost all the way. And this will make the thermocline pop out among all the other clutter on the screen. And as long as you're graphing in deep enough water, you'll be able to find that thermocline. If you're graphing in like 20 feet of water and the thermocline's in 35 feet, you obviously won't see it. And so now that you've identified where the thermocline is, let's take a spot like this ledge right here where the thermocline is in 25 feet of water. And fortunately on this spot, the top of this ledge is in 25 feet of water as well. And so these fish may live up on top of this ledge or suspended over these deep trees. But this next spot shows a thermocline again in 25 feet of water, but this ledge is actually in 50 feet of water and the bass are not going to live on this ledge because it's below the thermocline. And so even though this ledge looks the exact same as the last spot we looked at, it's too deep for those fish to live, and so you need to go locate a shallower ledge to find fish. Well, that's great. Now you know that every time you fish offshore, you can look for the thermocline and know how deep the fish are going to be. Uh. That is actually not the case, and it's not that simple, unfortunately, for a couple reasons. First, the thermocline will tell you the deepest point that those fish will get, whether that's 25 feet or 35 feet. But a lot of times, bass will live shallower than the thermocline. They may live up in 10 feet of water or 20 feet of water, even though the top of the thermocline is in 35 feet. And so to determine how deep those fish are, you actually still have to check a lot of different offshore areas, fish spots are in 10 feet of water, spots are in 20 feet of water, spots are in 35 feet of water. All this thermocline will tell you is that you don't need to be fishing deeper than 35 feet. And so it's not the cure-all, it's just helping limit the amount of water and the depth of water you need to fish. The other thing is that the thermocline is really only present during the summer months. And during the fall, lakes go through what is called turnover, where all the water in the lake mixes and the thermocline will disappear. This means that the bass will live anywhere from 100 feet of water in this image all the way up to a foot of water. And it's really hard actually to find out what depth those fish are in because they'll move from you know, 70 feet up to 30 feet over to 15 feet and they basically just follow shad this time of year and are not that focused on the actual water depth they're in. And the same thing goes in the winter time. Again, you won't have that thermocline to rely on. And so really the thermocline is only helpful in the summer months, but it is helpful that time of year. So if you can find the thermocline, you can eliminate a lot of water in the summer. 
So what this means is that this initial rule of thumb graphic has a big caveat on it. Basically, when you're fishing ultra clear water with four plus feet of visibility, fish above the thermocline in the summertime, and then the rest of the months, the fish could be as deep as they may go. I found fish as deep as 75 feet in the fall and winter. And so they can go very, very deep in the winter months and the fall. So don't rule out anything when you're fishing in ultra clear water because those fish can get literally anywhere. So to drive this point home, I want to show you an example of how you can use these rules of thumb to eliminate a ton of water next time you go to the lake to look for bass offshore. So for example, let's say you're going to a muddy water lake that has zero to one foot of visibility. Well, you'll know that the bass are going to be eight feet or shallower. And so if you pull up your Navionics map or a Lake Master or any sort of mapping software, you can normally shade the bottom of the lake at certain depth ranges. And so you can shade everything that is deeper than eight feet of water one color and everything shallower than eight feet of water another color. And this is really helpful because you'll know that you only need to look for offshore areas where it's highlighted in the color you choose for that eight feet and above of water. Same thing goes if you're fishing a clear lake that has two to four feet of visibility. In this case, you want to be looking in 25 feet or less of water. And so you can shade all of the structure and contour lines that are 25 feet and above. And this will allow you to eliminate all of the super deep structure that you may think look good on the map, like these humps or points, and just focus on that 25 feet of water or less. And again, I want to reiterate that these rules of thumb do not mean that the bass are going to be exactly in 8 feet of water or exactly in 15 feet of water or 25 feet of water. It means that the bass could be anywhere from 0 feet of water out to 25 feet of water. And so even though these are general guidelines, you still have to fish all of the different depth ranges to determine where the fish are on a given day. So let's say I'm going to look for fish on a stained water lake where the water visibility is one to two feet. I'll know from my rule of thumb that I don't need to fish deeper than 15 feet, but I'm still gonna check offshore ledges that are in six feet of water, eight feet of water, 10 feet of water. And once I start getting bit in let's say 12 feet of water, I'm gonna start replicating that depth around the lake and look for other structures like points, humps, and ledges in 12 feet of water. And what I find is that on a given day, the bass like to be within a two to three foot depth range. And so if you're finding fish in 10 to 12 feet of water on one spot, you're also gonna find fish in 10 to 12 feet of water on other areas. And you can then basically eliminate the shallower ledges or the deeper ledges on that given day. And then the fun of offshore fishing is after two or three weeks, those bass may leave those 12 foot ledges and they may move deeper to the 15 foot ledges or shallower to the eight foot ledges. And you have to continually check the different depth ranges and structures that are located in different parts of the lake so you can determine what the fish are doing on any given day. And so there's no one perfect answer for how deep the fish are gonna be offshore. A lot of times it just takes experimentation, but you can narrow down how deep you need to be looking using my rules of thumb I lay out in this video or the thermocline. So guys, that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully this will help you figure out how deep you need to be fishing next time you go offshore on your lake. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed, and if you want more content from Fish the Moment, check out my website, fishthemoment.com. On my website, I offer virtual fishing lessons you can do from your home using Google Hangout, on the water fishing lessons where you can go out in your boat and I can show you how to find fish with your electronics and on the water, and also lake breakdowns of some of those popular lakes around the country where I'll give spot recommendations, conditions, and lure recommendations as well. And if you really enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel in a more personal way, donate on my Patreon page. On Patreon, you can give a small monthly donation that helps me continue to make quality content for you guys into the future. And last but not least, check out my social media pages. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, and I post a lot of great pictures, videos, and articles about bass fishing. So thanks again for checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one.